Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. All right, let me read this verse and then we all can take a seat. Come on, do an air squat or something. Let's not. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I want some JD legs. Please help me. Please help me. All right. Acts 2, here we go. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Somebody say one place. Come on. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came back to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were saying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And if you skip down, I love it. In verse 7, they were utterly amazed. And they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And it goes to talk about all the different types of people in the room. And then in verse 12, as it said, they were amazed and perplexed. And they asked one another, what does this mean? And then, listen to this. I love this next verse in 13. Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've been drinking too much vino. You're always going to have some haters. Here's some people that were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they couldn't contain themselves. Speaking in tongues of fire. And then they had the haters, the naysayers, the smack talkers. And then Peter addresses the crowd in verse 14. He said, then Peter stood up with the other 11. You better have your tribe who you got around you that's going to stand up. He raised his voice. How many know your voice matters? And he addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you supposed. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Somebody say all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. E even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire, billows of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness, and it goes on. And here's what I want to tell you. This is what the book of Action is trying to tell us on the day of Pentecost when the church was mandated to get up, to be bold, to get full, filled with the Holy Spirit, and do something. Just turn your palms to heaven because we got to shake some things loose up in here. And Heavenly Father, God, I pray right now. Lord, if you did it then, you're still doing it today. This is your church. This ain't no God in the box church, Lord, and we just give you full permission, Holy Spirit, to move in this place. Light a fire on the inside of us. God, that we want to grow. We don't want to be the same or stay the same. We don't want to waste another year. Use us. Open our hearts. Let us have ears to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, everybody says, amen. amen. You may be seated. Let me tell you something. We can't become who we want to be by remaining who we are. For Connor Mead, I say it again. We can't become what we need to be by remaining who we are. We got to know that we are all at a level right now. And I was talking about it last night and it kind of sparked it. I had a whole other thing planned for last night and then God had another plan. I you know it's always better to yield to when the Holy Spirit's telling you. Not today. <laughs> Title of my message is Embracing Divine Purpose. 
Somebody say, my growth matters. Let me tell you something. Your growth matters. It matters to the kingdom of God. It matters to this church. It matters to this community. It matters to your family that we cannot be okay with being comfortable and staying the same. It's amazing how so many Christians can keep quoting scripture, but their life doesn't change. That is not kingdom. Your life should go from glory to glory. It should wind up. You're called to be the head, not the tail. You might take a kick. You might take a valley, but we're going to walk through the valley, and we're going to keep on walking to that next pinnacle. What does that look like? How do we do it? How many know that God has a blueprint? Okay, maybe you don't hear that. When you stop growing, we stop living, and we just start existing. So what does it take for us to grow? I will tell you that we're pretty good with the form formula because in this house, salvation is the beginning of where the church starts. Jesus does the salvation. We get to do the discipleship. The question is, are you willing to be discipled? And then what's it look like? How much do you want to lean in? How much do you want to listen to it? How much do you want to press in? And so I was just have a couple thoughts. And last night I was talking about how do we close the gap on where we're at and where we want to be. I was thinking to myself as I was preaching last night just on, man, in the front of my Bible, I've always had a list of just in case anything happens to me, babe, these are the people I want you to call that I know how to pray. Do you know, before I came to this church, I didn't have a list because I didn't know how to pray. I came to men's prayer, started men's prayer out of an insecurity. But the difference is I know how to pray now. I know how to pray with authority. It's around, I've raised up a lot of mighty men around me that know how to pray, selfishly a little bit, just in case anything goes down. I need to dial, not 911. Not 411, I don't need any information. I need to call my friends on my top 10 list on my iPhone going, hey, I need you in five. Start praying for this. Start praying for this. Matter of fact, we're going to stand up and pray for somebody right now. I just got a text right before here. Our friend G is in the hospital. Whether you know him or not, here's the thing. Here's a gangster that was in St. Marcos that gave his life to the Lord in prison, came out, tatted up, ratted up, and no one was going to hire him except somebody in this church. And then he gave his life fully to the Lord, does street ministry, never misses men's prayer. I mean, he's called G for a reason. But I'm going to tell you something. He's got a heart of pure gold. And when I saw him, and I saw him roll up to a merge, I was like, oh, sugar. I know he's on that, on that truck pull, but is he going to stab me? And joking around, I went up, and I'm like, you going to stab anybody? He goes, man, a couple years ago I would have, but not now. I got Jesus. I'll pray for you right now. Man, I'm going to tell you, he prays with an authority. But right now, he's in the hospital, and we're going to pray. So I want you to stir up your gifts right now, and we're going to pray for G. We're not a church that talks about it. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for our brother, your son. G, we lift him up right now. We come against any assignment against him, and we break the curse in the name of Jesus. We speak to his blood, and it is healed right now. God, I thank you, Lord, that the numbers are going to be healing, turning around. The doctors are going to be amazed with utter amazement and wonder. God, we thank you for a healing miracle right now. We stand in the gap, the gap for him right now. God, I Thank you right now for friends interceding on his behalf. God, we love our friend. We love our brother. God, we thank you for his testimony. We thank you this is one more testimony. He's working out in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, he is healed. He is released from the hospital. He is home with his family. He is home with his daughter. He is home and healed and restored and victorious. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. All right, I feel better. And keep praying for G. And then the difference is we're going to get him up here and he's going to give you the testimony. Always take a moment. Don't say, this is how I grew up. Someone be like, oh, I went to a Christian college. I went to Westmont. And people would be up like, yeah, I'll be praying for me. I don't know how many times I told people I'll be praying for them. And I hope God doesn't have a list of those people. Hey, you left this guy hanging, this guy. Probably 100 pages. I just had to come to the altar when I got awakened, saved, and said, Lord, I'm sorry. If you could just remember everyone I promised a prayer for, and we just cover it all in once. Lord, 
help them all. Because I was the type of Christian to say, yeah, yeah, I'll be praying for you. And I'd be like, oh, yeah. What time's that show on? 24? And then, you know, nine episodes later, I forgot to pray for the dude. Not this church. When we say let's pray, let's take it serious. Let's intercede. A couple thoughts I want to have. Where you're at matters. You got to be in the right place. Pastor Jurgen said this about a week ago, and it messed me up for like a week. Because in Acts it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And the Holy Spirit came. See, I was in church my whole life, but was I in the right place? It's amazing how many people come here and get blessed and break through. Business flourishes. Ideas open up. They start a business. They say, you know, they move. Didn't come for discernment. Didn't come for wisdom. Never let us know. And I'm not judging them. But God confirms his word. Not just to the one person. But it's amazing how many people receive all this blessing and they take off to another place. And then I was reminded of that verse in Proverbs 27, 8, pretty much means don't wander. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from his place. Where you're at matters. I want to see where we can grow together. We could do big things together. Don't start it. No one takes a turkey out early. And if they do, I'm not coming to your house for Thanksgiving. There's no ceiling in this life, in the kingdom, than the ceiling we place over our life. So where you're at matters. It's amazing that we can get caught up in the, the shiny objects of the world and get taken out, but God has us in a place for a reason. I love this couple because you came all the way from Florida just on a word, and God confirmed his word, and I'm telling you, to have bosses in this house, it's like, God is sending all the mighty men and women from around the nation to this house. We have preachers that came in all weekend at PFA going, I've never been to a place like this. Lance Wall and I was like, I, I need to come back and preach more at this church. I'm like, you need to come back more and preach at this church. I even had my dad call me. I'm like, he's got to come back and preach at this church. We podcasted the 9 and the 11. And if you missed on Sunday, please podcast it because it's a word for our church. We got to trust God that we're in the right place. Even if there's a storm, I was thinking about Joseph. You know, he went from the pit to Potiphar's house to prison, and he finally got to the palace. But he had a journey to keep being developed at different areas of his life so he could turn into the man that could rule a nation. But he had to go through some things to keep growing, to be discipled. Can we stay in a place long enough to be discipled to get us to our promise? What does that look like for you? Who do you have that can pray with you? Who can you have that will hold on and confirm a word that you're believing for? Can we stay in the heat long enough to be developed? Number two is power. Power is kingdom. Fresh, real, powerful. God's given you power. You shall receive power. You're in the right place when you have power. Discipleship, listen, it's amazing. My Bible says, when I was reading it earlier tonight, I love this. It was just talking about, well, what version is this? I don't know. I like this version, though. And I was going through it, and it says the Holy Spirit is revealed. When the Holy Spirit is revealed, it is as a divine person. It's amazing goes on to all these things and it says, the New Testament distinguishes between having the Spirit, which is true of all believers, and being filled with the Spirit, which is a privilege and a duty to receive power. I knew Jesus, but I didn't operate in power till I invited the Holy Spirit in to operate in power. We can't be a powerful church called the shape of city to change a state, to influence a nation, unless every one of us can operate in power. Tonight, we're going to talk about operating in power, and we're going to give you an opportunity to come down, be bold and courageous, come down and receive prayer in just a few minutes to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I need about 100 of Mike and Joy Connells everywhere, running out through these high schools, praying for people, we don't have to wait. You know what? Sunday's five days away. I'm going to pray for you now. 
boom, power. Wherever you're at, you walk in power and authority. What's amazing is when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I thought my life was getting a little bit worse for a while, and I realized that all the junk was coming to the surface. God was starting to expose some things in my life. And how I handled that was I didn't run from my pastor. I didn't run from church. I ran into every meeting I could. I was at Connect Group. I was at prayer meetings. I was at every conference. I was like a conference junkie at Awaken going, man, I need more of this. Wednesday night, pastor, I just show up on a Wednesday night. He's like, what are you doing here? I was like, I thought you said there was a prayer meeting. And he goes, no, 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 that was last month. I was like, well, I'm here. You want one? I need all the prayer I can get. And he's like, all right, let me just cook you dinner. You know what I mean? Not him. Pastor Leanne's like, I'll fix you and Michaela dinner. But it was amazing that we just prayed wherever we're at. We got to receive power. Number three is living a prophetic life. Edification, encouragement, and comfort. How many need that right now? Just me, okay. According to 1 Corinthians 14, 3, prophecy is meant for the edification, encouragement, and comfort of believers. When filled with the Holy Spirit, the prophetic gift can be a source of guidance and inspiration for you and this community. I got to tell you something. I can't tell you. We got to get mental health right out of this place. I want us to operate. We can get set free, healed, delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit, and operate in power and bring comfort, encouragement, and edification to every one of our business friends, our friend, wherever we're at, those three things. I want to make sure you're edified. I want to make sure you're encouraged, and I want to make sure you have comfort in a world of chaos. But we got to operate with power. Somebody say power. power. Mm. Two greatest discoveries in life. Finding God and then finding you. There's an identity crisis in the church. We got to just let the Christianese masks come down and be okay with not being okay for a season. But I don't know what you're walking through if you never talk about it. If you never show up at men's prayer, but then you're sucking your thumb on Sunday... I don't want to uncover you in front of everybody. Just come to men's prayer and let's deal with some man stuff. Ladies, you go to women's prayer. But finding God is step one. Finding you and getting totally empowered and encouraged and comforting others is step two. We can do it if you press in. Empowerment for purpose is number four. In Acts 2, 1, 17, witness the powerful moment of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples. This event symbolizes the empowerment of believers for a divine purpose. Just as the disciples received the Holy Spirit, we have these gifts and these talents that must be unlocked. This is your training ground. We got to be able to come to church and unleash these gifts and sharpen the sword. Teach you how to, hey man, get your shield up a little higher. Come on, like in 300, the one dude, he couldn't get his shield up. We're here to encourage you and show you how to get your shield up, how to put on the full armor, how to buckle up that that belt, speak some truth, how to not be intimidated by the enemy, how to put your flex on. Some of you all work out, but we need to start working out in the spirit. Your boldness matters is number five. What you do makes a difference. You just have to decide what kind of difference do I want to make? What kind of difference do you want to make? I wake up every day and I see my three kids. And I see my daughter was getting in an argument with me because I wouldn't leave early to come to church tonight. I have to be at worship at 515, Dad. I said, well, I'm not driving you. Fine. I'll ask Mom. She's probably not going to drive you either. Fine. I'll Uber. Okay, that's it. (laughs) Where do you even know about Uber? What show have you been watching? But my daughter's willing to fight me to get to worship. And I used to throw a tantrum because I didn't want to go to church. That's why I get up and I say, I'm going to go again. And then I get to raise up and be around families. And I see other kids that are like my daughter. I'm like, man, we're raising up a generation of warrioresses and warriors and these young people. It's amazing that I wanted to say she was nine, but she's 11 now. That's so scary. Lord, I'm sorry. She was just telling me, I'm like, oh, what happened to this one girl that you didn't invite to your party? 
And she goes, Dad, I only want to invite friends that actually have meaning in my life. What? I was like, I need to invite as many friends as possible so I get more gifts. I said, are you sure you don't want to do that? She goes, Dad, that's shallow. And that girl actually at school is a mean girl and makes fun of other girls. And I don't like being a part of it, so I'm not going to invite her. She's uninvited. And then the sweetest thing, but I'm going to invite her to church, Dad. It's amazing. But that's because of what this culture, this community has done to encourage. That's why I wake up. This is the house of transformation, the last point. Then I want, I'm going to ask Pastor Samuel to do something because I want us to have as many people that need to get prayed for. I want to bring you up in your manscaping jacket like mine. Your boldness matters. I'm going to tell you something. I used to be the type that wouldn't invite friends to church. And maybe you're still nervous to invite people to church. I want to tell you something. I want to take Temecula. I, I know God's said, all right, you're going to take Temecula. I want to, I want to, I want to reach Escondido. It, it's just a little closer on a rainy night, you know? We got Oceanside. But, but I'm going to tell you, let's be a steward of these seats that are empty first. Let's be a steward of, let's train up, and, and, and how can we be an invitation to the gospel, the good news of Jesus? Bert, can you do that thing where you slide your whole arm like I heard earlier in worship? How'd you do that? That whole thing. Yeah, that's good. Felt like we were going to go gospel right there. Hey! I saw that in worship and I got excited. Some of you, that's too much. I don't want to ever become a religious church, by the way. We came here to have fun, to be empowered. I want you to stand to your feet. Acts 2 challenges us to step out of our comfort zones, relying on the Holy Spirit to embolden us as we play a vital role in filling God's redemptive plan for humanity. We cannot be timid and step back. I said it last night, and then we're going to pray for you. So right now, listen, if you've never honestly been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want you to come down to this altar as I tell the story. And I'm just going to open up the altar right now. Pastor Samuel, if you can come up to the stage. And listen, we've all been here. Come on up here. Yeah, take your jacket off. I'm going to open this up. Come on down if anyone wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is important. We're never going to be the church we're called yeah. to be unless we can be bold right now. Let's Thank go. You. Come on. Let's go. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I referenced it like this last night. Even the disciples who hung out with Jesus during his 37 miracles. And I'm going to tell you, listen, the disciples were all in until he got crucified. Then they weren't all in. Some folded like a deck chair. Some went back. Some went to play small. Some went to fish. Some were scared. Some denied him three times. Some were doubters. They were all crushed. But then Jesus resurrected from the grave. He went and found them. We're my boys. And he looked for them. He went straight up to Thomas. He said, come on, put your finger in there. I know you doubted me, but I love you, son. Thomas went and flipped the world up and evangelized for Jesus. They said he accounted more salvations than almost anybody, leading more people to the Lord. And all he had to do is see it to believe it. All these, all these disciples flipped upside down because they knew resurrection power. They turned the world upside down. The reason why we're still here today is because the disciples did their job. They went up and flipped the world up, and it kept going and kept going. But they say we're one generation away from losing Christianity. If we stay quiet, if we don't get bold, if we don't find a fire on the inside of us, some of us got complacent tonight. We got to break that off. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. 
Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.